How's everybody doing? Uh, once again, uh, this is GS Six Gun Glenn Mercurio uh, from Gemstar Custom Razors. I'm going to do a little bit of uh, pinning today, but first let me uh, invite everybody into the shop. We've got a double duck gold edge today. It's going on the bench to finish up. Had to take the warps out. Um, just real quick through here. There's my drill press, all the acrylics and woods and things like that. Out that door right there is where I keep all the really dust makers, the saws and sanders and everything are outside and actually in another room. Reloading stuff, the bench of all the uh, buffers, you can see the grinder back there next to the gun safe. Come around, more buffers. Um, back over there by that window you see now, that's my newest bench. I just finally put in a reloading bench again. Um, more buffers, got a lot of buffers. Um, come around and we are going to come right over here to this area of the bench which is where I do most of the pinning and things like that um, where those two vices are. I'm going to lock that in there and hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing. Um, first off, I'd like to say you know besides pinning and everything you need to keep your razors tight um, and I really really highly advise that everybody gets a a jeweler's block and a nice four ounce little uh, chasing hammer. This has a ball peen and you can get it flat or half round. Um, both of these together, and you don't need this big four by four, you can get the smaller two by twos and three by threes. Both of those together ship should be less than 20 bucks. You can tighten all your all your pins that way. Um, it's a nice smooth flat surface so you don't mar up your pins. I might keep them pretty shiny. Um, this was actually my very first pinning hammer. All it is is a tack hammer that's been re redesigned down to four ounces and uh, a super highly polished uh, head. What I actually use that for is for the final the final shaping and right before the razor goes back. Um, I do a fast pin um, and get it just about perfect and then uh, go in, hone the razors, finish them up and after stropping and everything they usually they'll loosen up just a touch when after the first one pin. Then I'll put the razor on this pinning block and use this hammer to finish tightening it up and to finish the the really smooth edges that it needs. The smooth fin finish that it needs. Yeah. Um, today we're going to be doing a double dot gold edge that came in for steel straightening. So it's gone through twice now. Um, I actually will put pictures in the video of how how uh, warp they were but I straightened them out. Um, before we do that, and I always advise that you know before you put everything together, before you do your final stuff, you do any polishing, cleaning, things like that that you were gonna do to the you know like the gold on this on the scales right here. You want to do that before the razor goes together. That way you can get it really good. Um, in the shop I pretty much exclusively use the uh, Blue Magic metal polish. Um, you can buy it at most any auto parts place, about six bucks for that tub there. Um, the last tub I had, probably had for a year. Um, each one of those lasts about a year, and I, as you guys know, I do quite a few razors. But you want to get the final shine on these things before you put everything together, because after you put everything together, you have the pins in the way and everything else. So if you're going to shine them, you want to shine them before that, the, right before you put everything together. Nice shine on that one. Use just a little bit here on this. These have already been cleaned and all, but we're going to do the final shine on the pretty little ducks. Um, one thing about the double ducks, um, I am a cracked ice fanatic. I love the look of cracked ice scales, but I'll be honest with you, the double duck scales are probably the most fragile, most beautiful, finicky, most beautiful. Um, easily broken, easily warped, most beautiful. <laughs> so it's kind of a love-hate relationship on these. Um, these scales, uh, basically the more yellow they are, the closer they are to, the, to, to degrading, the whiter they are, the better. Uh, brand new gold edges and wonder edges and things have, uh, actually have, these scales are actually white. There's no uh, yellow to them. As they get older and the celluloid starts to degrade, actually this is cattling, um, starts to degrade, it will uh, start to yellow out. So the yellow, the more yellow these scales are, the closer they are to totally degrading and then you get the cell rot and everything else. Now this is a 7 8 um, 
gold edge that's going back into it. The, the razor itself is in beautiful condition. Um, just gorgeous. Um, still has all the gold on it. It's just the scales were just a mess. Um, like I said, I'll put some pictures up. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make some pins. And I'm going to use nickel silver rod because that's what's on there originally. I lock the pin in the vise, make sure it's straight. And I just clip it off with a set of dikes. That leaves a little bit sticking up. And I'm going to smooth that out with my file. And very, very, very gently start the pin. Now, I don't need to make a complete pin. If you notice, I'm going to check. You don't really want to be hitting straight down. If you notice, I'm going around the edges. I never really hit the rod straight. That's more than enough. And I'll get a small stainless steel washer. And all I want to do is make sure that it locks onto the washer. if I can get the washer on my finger. <laughs> um, also, one thing to know about these washers that come from micro fasteners and most of the other places, there's two sides to each washer. One's dead flat and the other one's slightly beveled. You want to put the dead flat side against the scale. It gives it a nicer look. Once it's locked on, that's all you need it to do. You don't need it to be pounded on there. The other thing you want to be careful of is if you hit too hard when you're setting up the peened end, you're going to create a percussion bulge right underneath the peen, which won't allow the washer to snug up. So you want to be careful of that. You don't want to hit it too hard and create that bulge. Um, also, that's what cracks scales a lot. Um, and I, I know where to set this on my vise, so I know how long it needs to be. It's just something I've measured over the years, so I always know exactly where to set it to make a pin as long as I need it to be. Um, that's something you're going to have to figure out of how you're going to make your pins. Once again, just tap it really, really light. I'm just kind of going around a circular pattern right around the edge of the pin, and it creates a mushroom effect. Over here, I have a whole mess of the washers laid out on the little bench top here, um, and I can see which way the bevel is really, really easy when there's a bunch of them together. And again, all I do is I just make sure that it locks on. Um, the gold edge, of course, has a third pin, so I'm going to make three of these. Like I said, I kind of got a spot here that I look through at the bottom of the vise to know I'm about three quarters of an inch long. I always make my pins between three quarters of an inch and one inch long. That way I have plenty of it. Your big, thick, weight and butchers, things like that, the 7 eighths, 8 eighths, 3 fours. Um, you need a little bit longer pin. So if you make them all between 3 quarters and 1 inch, you're good. Really, really gently. So you don't want to create a percussion bulge there. Okay, now I've made three pins, which is how many I need for this razor. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the pins and then I'm going to work the razor. Okay, All three of those are locked in, so I have three pins set aside. Now, <clears throat> you always want to make sure that the hole is big enough. Um, I keep a little um, twist drill, sometimes they're called a pin drill or pin um, and I just make sure I cut the, uh, the hole just a slight bit larger than standard. The, um, the pin stock that you get from a lot of these places, the knife places, it's not, it's rated at 1 16th, but it's not really 1 16th sometimes. There, there is a little bit of variance. So if you go through the holes on a, on a vintage razor before you smash them in there, you stand way less of a chance of cracking the scale. Um, now I use, when I drill my pinholes for custom scales, I use a 5 64th. So it's 1 64th over the 1 16th. It gives it a little bit more room, a little bit more you can play with there. Um, basically that's probably what I'm doing. I'm using a 1 16th inch bit right here and I'm just kind of spinning it around with my fingers so 
I'm probably about a 64th over. <laughs> but as you can tell, it's pretty tight when it goes in and then it loosens up as I cut away just a tiny bit of material. What you want to watch is if it creates a percussion bulge, and especially if you're using wood scales, it will snap the scale. So all that work that you put in is gone by the right side. Okay, then another thing I always do before I start pinning is I check it to make sure that there's a little bit of give in the scale and the pinning material. You want to make sure it's not really snug. You want to make sure it's just a little bit of give there. And you do that on both scales. This just saves you a whole lot of heartaches. Now you got to understand, especially like with these double duck scales, a lot of the value in the razor is in the scale. So what you don't want to do is break the scales. So now that pivot hole right there, that's too tight. It barely, it, it won't even spin around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that back out carefully. Don't ever rush. Hmm. Okay. And then we're going to kind of drill that out just a little bit more. Pin vise, that's what these things are sometimes called. Twist drill or pin vise. Watch out because they're expensive. See now it's nice and a lot looser. That's what I'm looking for. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the wedge pin first. And I've actually marked the wedge. Every one of my wedges is always marked with the lucky number seven. And uh, we're going to go in from the, the front side and I'm going to drop first pin through. Make sure that everything's still, I like the feel of it, the looseness of it, that it's not too tight. First pin comes through. I see the seven there, so it does go this way. And I did forget to use the pin vise on this one. So I could have broke that. So you gonna... Cut that one out a little bit. That fits. You want to make sure you set it up correctly so it's, it's going the right way and everything matches. I usually mark them before I take everything apart. In other words, before I throw everything all over the bench, I mark them. Now we're going to put in the back side scale. Like I said, I work from the front to the back. Okay. And we got that nice. Now here's a step that I kind of came up with myself. This is a mock tang, um, and I have them in three different thicknesses. Because um, basically, there's about three different thicknesses of razors. Um, one's about three sixteenths, one eighth, and just a little bit under one eighth. And it really kind of depends on the size of the tang that you're working with. This is a middle size one, so I'm going to use the tang that's about the exact same width. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this to set the razor. Um, that way it's not flopping around, it's, it will pin and, and uh, fit the same way as the razor will, without me playing around with the razor. So I'm going to set my first pin, I'm going to use a microfastener bolt and washer setup. And you don't have to make this really super tight or anything, but what it does is it gives you kind of a mock razor. And you can also line it up, make sure that everything's nice and straight. Okay, so now I have a nice straight setup. I have a pin set up. Everything's being held together perfectly. I'm going to put the second washer on. Again with the bevel to the outside, flat side against the scale. Okay, now this is just experience because I've done so many of these. I use two different sets to cut. One, I use a really small set of dykes and I also use a set of nippers. When I use the nickel silver, I use the nippers. When I'm using brass, I use the dykes. Um, the reason is they peen differently. And um, if you get too close to the nickel silver, you won't get a good solid peen. So the nippers cut it off just a little bit farther away and then I file it into exactly where I want. Okay, you want a nice, flat, smooth surface to start your pin. 
and I kind of go by feel more than measurement. I know I should just barely feel the rod sticking up from the washer. And you want to take your time, especially considering, say for instance, this didn't have a nice brass bolster to protect the scales. And it was a set of scales that I just spent a day putting on uh, super glue, a CA finish. I have this beautiful high gloss super glue finish and then I use the file and wreck it. So you want to be careful with it. Okay, now I'm going to set the peen very, very lightly. I'm going to go around the edge of that. At the same time that I'm going around and hitting back and forth and angling, I'm actually rolling the razor on the uh, vice surface too, on the anvil side. So I'm actually angling and there's two different motions going on here so that I'm never actually hitting straight down. Now once that's locked, I'll flip it and I'll repeat on the back side. And I'm just very, very, very lightly tapping in. If you notice, I'm going around in a circle. Much. As I'm tapping, I'm moving the razor this way, this way, and moving the hammer this way, this way. Everything's always in motion. And what I'm doing is I'm kind of feeling the paint, making sure there's no real rough edges. Again, after I'm done stropping this razor in, after it's been hung and everything, I'll use this and that to try and make a perfect peen, as close to perfect as possible. Um, I know a lot of the guys are actually polishing the, the pins now. I, I honestly don't. I do it all just with a hammer. Nothing wrong with polishing it, but as soon as you have to adjust it, you lose that polish anyway. But anyway, that's just, I just don't. I just use the hammer and get a nice, clean look. Okay, so now that's locked in. Now on a three, uh, three pin setup, like on this razor, you're gonna go wedge, then the razor, then finally the center pin. The center pin is the one that'll break on you. Every single time, it will crack a scale if you're not really careful, if you don't have it all set up right. Um, and then I check the tightness by seeing how easy it is to move the razor. Uh, don't step on those if you drop them, by the way. <laughs> yes, I'm done. Okay. Once again, we're going to go in from the back side, for, or from the front side. We're going to set that. We're going to put in a bearing washer inside there. Again, with the bevel. Always put the flat part towards the scale. Even on the inside, put the flat part towards the scale. It bevels it, and it creates a better um, friction surface for you. So you get much better action. You just remember, in or out, flat side towards the scale. Now I'm going to line it all up, make sure it all fits. One of the bad things about these scales is that sometimes they're warped and they're not real straight. But you have to do what you have to do to get these things to work. Okay. I'm going to put the outside washer on. Again, the flat side towards the scale, bevel side out. Okay. We've got everything all held together, right? Now if you notice, I'm holding this closed and I'm holding it right there next to it. And again, I'm going to use the nippers and cut it off. Smooth that up just a touch. Very, very, very slowly, very, very carefully because I do not want to file the scale. set the peen. You want to do that really carefully because you don't want the washer to jump off. If you notice, I'm really being real delicate with these because double duck scales. And you know, I always, I always tell people practice with popsicle sticks. 
Um, if you practice pinning, pinning with popsicle sticks, they break easier than most scales. So you can do a popsicle stick to be safe. Notice how I just kind of let the hammer bounce back and forth. I'm not really, I'm just kind of keeping it going. Always just off center. I'm not really ever hitting straight down. I'm always just off center. Okay. As you can see, the blade will open and close. It will not drop open. It will stay open. Okay. Now we're going to adjust for... So right now, you really can't see it, but it, it needs to move to the back side a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to give it a little twist. I'm going to see what happens. And now it's opening and closing just fine. Okay, but <clears throat> you can adjust where it's hitting. If I wanted to bring it towards the front side, I'd set it right here and I'd hit to the top of the scale on the front side scale. And that would move it to the front side. But on this case, I want to move it towards the back side scale. So I'm going to flip it so that I'm on the back side. And I'm going to hit to the top of the scale. But of course, the razor's flipped over, so I have to hit this way. That's what I always mean by directional pinning. You, just, you can actually move the razor by directional pinning. As you notice, it's going into center now. Okay, now comes the last pin. Uh, the spacer I set aside earlier. Now what we're going to do... Yeah, this comes the fun part. I'm going to set the pin. Hmm. Yeah, that's a little tight. That pin's a little... Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to open that up a little bit more again. I'm not liking the way that pin is fitting. So we're going to use the twist drill. open that hole just a little bit more. I see the problem too. Besides the hole being needed to be open, in the very end, this was the very first one we cut. The very end of that had a percussion bulge on it. That was the end of the brand new rod. In other words, it's not something we did that came from the, the people that sent it to me. The very end sometimes has a percussion bulge from where they cut it off, I guess. I'm not sure. Anyway, now you can see the pin fits nice and loose in there. Okay, so we're going to put the pin, and I'm going to hold my thumb on it so it stays where I want it to. And then I'm going to... I hope you guys, I'm going to move over here so you guys can see this. I'm going to slide the... Slide that in. I use actually a special set of very long needle nose pliers to do this. I'm going to hold the pin with my thumb and grab the spacer until it slides through. Once it slides through, you're there. Um, by the way, the razor actually doesn't hit that spacer. I have never seen a vintage razor unless there was something very seriously wrong with it actually hit it. I don't know whether you guys can see in there, but it's actually on this razor, you are about an eighth of an inch off that when it's closed. It's to actually hold the scales off that beautiful gold. That's what I think this was designed for. Who knows? That's my theory of it. You guys can make up your own theories of it. But it's not there to hold the razor there. None of them touch. Unless, like I said, something's wrong with the razor. Okay, now comes the tough one. Because this one is very, very delicate. You're putting pressure without having... You're putting a whole lot of pressure on the scales because there's not a lot of backing to it. In other words, up here you have the tang back in it, up here you have the wedge back in it. Here you have this little tiny spacer back in it. So as careful as you are on the wedge and the pivot end, you have to be twice as careful on the center pin because it will break easier than any other pin that you use. And I want this really close because I don't actually want to tighten it per se, I just want to hold it there. Okay. 
I don't want to do a lot of peening in other words. I want it barely held in place. So I'm doing a little bit more filing. Very gently filing. Big huge file marks on the side of the gold edge scale are not good. Okay, now we're going to tighten that pin a little bit. One of the things, if you notice, I kind of move it all the way, almost to the side. Also, these edges have been uh, camfered up with the file so that they're rounded instead of uh, sharp. I want that sharp edge because as you turn the razor around, you can put a dent and finish it. I learned a lot of this by doing the uh, super glue, the CA finishes. They are some of the most delicate finishes out there. And they require so much work, so you don't want to mess them up. First time you put a big corner mark inside of a CA finish would be the last time you do it. That's why you round the edges of these vices. in dead center now, not hitting anything. Nice, tight. What I'm trying to do is just take off the rough edges. Um, once again, you can just run them on one of the buffers. Um, usually the Chromox buffing wheel will take it right out and will shine it right up. Um, I, just, I just don't. Um, I don't know, everybody has their own thing. If you're going to do uh, buffing wheels, you want to make a small plate like out of a piece of thin uh, nickel silver or tin or brass. Um, this should be nice and smooth so that it fits over the scale and the pin. You'll just drill out a small hole here so it just fit. there's just a hole big enough to, to poke the pin and the, the peen through and then you just take it over to the buffing wheel and you just spin it real quick. Um, but if you're going to do that, that's, that's the way you, you do them. Um, once again, GS6 gun, Gemstar Customs, uh, pinning a razor very, very carefully because it's a double duck gold edge. Now it's time to go hone it. Then once after, well, after I strop it, I would use this jeweler's block and this really super highly polished um, hammer and kind of smooth up the peens a little bit more and make them even shinier. Um, take it easy. See you guys on the forums. Thanks for joining me. Bye-bye.